couple things to keep in mind. Uh, one, the masks you have to stay on the entire time, even during photos. Uh, we're around each other, but also we're not sure how the coronavirus uh, um, affects other animals. Um, other zoos have actually had uh, positive cases amongst uh, some of their big cats uh, with the coronavirus. That's why, not, that's why we're not doing any tours with lions or tigers and seals right now. So uh, just to be on the safe side again, masks stay on. We want to make sure our animals and ourselves all stay healthy. Um, ask questions, anything you guys want to know, please, please ask. Uh, <laughs> take photos, take videos, whatever you'd like. Uh, we should be able to get some great photo opportunities. I might be able to help out with those as well. Um, there are some barriers that are going to be up. Uh, we stay behind them is a good idea. Uh, <laughs> and um, if those barriers do come down, uh, again, there might be some opportunities to get some good photo opportunities today. Uh, there are some yellow lines on the ground, so we're going to make sure to stay behind those, okay? Okay. Is there uh, any back. sections that you cannot record? Nope. Okay. Uh, uh, 100%. Uh, some of our tours, I think the only tour we don't, we ask that there's portions not to record is the Elephant Insider. And the reason for that, if you're curious, is um, sometimes uncaptioned videos or uh, pictures lead people to jump to conclusions. So some of the people see the, the little parts of the house, if people aren't sure exactly what, what's going on, uh -huh. it doesn't look as good as without the story behind it. Yeah. Uh, this area is 100% fine. Uh, take videos, take photos. Um, again, if you wanted to run the, the GoPro the whole time, like, it's, it's running. running. <laughs> yeah, go for it. It's perfectly fine. Uh, yeah. It's pretty cool stuff, and there's not too many opportunities to do things that we're about to do. So, enjoy yourself, guys. Uh, we're going to turn right here. Uh, once we're inside the gate, we can park the scooter. Uh, this way, uh, you can, if you don't mind being on foot, I assume. No, it don't matter. Perfect. All right. Watch it dip. Yeah, no <coughs> way. All right. Uh, hold on for just a moment. Let me get the thumbs up with the keeper. All right. Come on in, folks. Yeah. <laughs> if you don't mind, you can park this. Uh, right up to the side here, if you'd like. Yeah. There we go. No one else should be back here except for us. Oh boy, the behind the scenes of Cheetah Hunt. There you go. Yeah. There you guys go. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, so, we're oh. Make our way down to Mr. Mike over there in the green shirt to the left. And the hippos beyond them. Sorry. Mr. Mike, he's going to get some hand sanitizer, introduce himself, and we'll get going. Okay. Oh, look at these beautiful animals. Hippos aren't too bad either. Seeing how well you pay attention, that's good. That's good. <laughs> you guys wouldn't mind squirting up a little bit on your hands, and then uh, the group has a little placard on the ground. If you wouldn't mind squirting, I would just say that's great. That's perfectly fine, too. <laughs> I use my own. And of course, there's two pups on the ground. Uh, so one group each per pup, so you guys can distance out a little bit. Okay. So pick a sticker. <laughs> pick a sticker. Usually everyone moves around anyway. So. <laughs> <laughs> Ah. Um, good afternoon. Welcome to our hippo barn. Uh, my name is Mike. We have Susie. That's for you. That's for me. I'll save You're it. Gonna want. We'll yeah. <laughs> Make sure I use the right one this time. Um, we also got <laughs> Sheila, Tanya, and of course oh. Debbie. So uh, the four of us today are responsible for all of Edge of Africa. So we got the lions, we got the hyenas, we got the porcupines, we got the meerkats, we got the Nile crocodile, and then we have the three hippos. So uh, you'll probably uh, hippo willing see two out of you. Uh, which isn't too bad. So first up is our youngest. Her name is Debbie. Uh, just turned six years old. Six. Goodness, too many others. Um, six years old uh, in March. So um, when she came to us four years ago, she was half the size she is now. And when it's all said and done, she's probably going to be twice the size she is now as well. So uh, she is gaining about a pound a day. Uh, she's weighing in about 3,000 pounds now. She'll probably be about 3,500. Uh, in the next 10 years or so. They're a very long-lived animal. Uh, we have a six-year-old, a 14-year-old, and a 24-year-old. All of them are considered young. Uh, 50 to 60 is not uncommon in a zoo. <laughs> and if you guys have any questions, feel free to shout them out. I just wanna talk about whatever pops in my head. Hopefully it's appropriate. <laughs> uh, usually we talk about more about the animals and their personalities and what they do. I suppose stuff that you can just Google at home. Uh, or, or stuff that maybe you wouldn't be able to necessarily find on the other one. So, um, Debbie is one of our, I don't want to say our smartest hippo because that wouldn't be giving our other hippos any justice. Uh, but she is one of our quickest to learn. I think it's because she's still growing and she's a little bit more food motivated uh, than the other two hippos that are still growing too, but just at a much, much lower rate. 
Um, but with Debbie, some days she is the Einstein, and other days we always say the hamster fell off the wheel. So we'll <laughs> see what day she gives you guys today, shall we? So you notice, yeah, uh, you're just pointing that out. Uh, it looks like she's bleeding on her upper lip, and that is actually this stuff right here that Susie was nice enough to give me. Oh. It's not blood. It is called blood sweat, though. And it's a very interesting... Um, blood like sweat. Spot. Yeah, blood sweat. Uh, only by hippos, and it is a secretion from a gland. It is not a sweat because it doesn't evaporate really quickly like ours does, uh, and it's very viscous. So uh, we don't necessarily know what the main purpose is for it, but it probably serves a lot of things that we can speculate. Um, it does uh, keep them from getting sunburned uh, because it is a very oiled thing. It makes like a nice sunscreen, and we definitely see them produce more of it in the summer than the two or three days of winter yep. we have here. Um, I think, for me personally, I think one of the main purposes for them, uh, that blood sweat, is to protect from scratches. <laughs> or protect the scratches when they occur. In the wild, hippos are going to be fighting with each other, fighting with everything, rubbing up too hard against something. The skin's, uh, on the average, about three inches thick, so they're not going to probably get much damage to any organ. But you can imagine a scratch in Africa is probably going to get infected. So you get that, that viscous, oily stuff in there, it keeps it from getting any bugs or any kind of infection in it. You guys have any questions? I'll keep rambling on. You have how many hippos? I'm sorry? How many hippos? Three hippos all together. Okay. How many can we have? Two. Just kidding. Uh, <laughs> and their names? Our, I'll, I'll be honest with you. So when someone asks our supervisor how many hippos we can have, and we have three, she says three. Uh, <laughs> we could probably do another one. It would take a lot of uh, moving around and tetrising, yeah. so to speak. But the whole reason she is here is to breed with the uh, male we have that's right next door. Uh, he likes them young, he's 24, she's 6, so, oh, uh, but uh, genealogically speaking, um, <laughs> really I was the first person to ever say that, so. <laughs> you were or were not? We're not. Oh. I think it was Kelly. Anyway, um, <laughs> uh, but we're not really, I don't want to say we're not ready to breed, because we could, um, but in the United States we're, we're actually very responsible breeders when it comes to hippos. They mention they live forever, and they're one of the few large mammals that uh, the gestation is extremely short, uh, so you could have a couple hippos a year easily, and that's yeah. just not feasible. So no. <laughs> uh, we hear about maybe two to three hippo births in the whole United States uh, a year in zoos uh, because we're being really smart about it. Now, speaking of being smart, um, hippos are, are extremely intelligent and uh, uh, highly motivated during the breeding days, a couple days out of every month. And the whole reason we have the, the hippo out on the exhibit right now is because the male was able to climb a six-foot wall to get to a female. Yeah. Oh, we didn't think that was possible. Oh. They show us uh, uh, that they're smarter than we are many, many a times. In fact, um, one of the, the, the fun things for me personally is when I have an eight-year-old on this tour, and they ask me a question about a hippo I don't know. And it, it, and I've been here for 20, 20 years, half, over half my life. So. Um, and that's just because we don't know much about hippos. Uh, the stuff I learned about hippos in 1998, a lot of it has changed or become obsolete. Um, they're just not a well-researched animal in the wild. In zoos, absolutely. But uh, in the wild, they're in the water all day long. They're very murky water. They hold their breath up to 20 minutes. They could be halfway down the river or lake uh, by the time uh, they, you go to see, see a pico in them. So uh, if you're just trying to study them on land in the middle of the night when they're out grazing, if you're walking around looking for hippos in the middle of the night in Africa, you're, you're dumb and dead. Uh, to put it like not nicely, so uh, they are potentially very fatal an animal uh, for humans, uh, even though they are vegetarian. So um, they don't kill as many humans as they used to, uh, mostly because uh, humans are not going around in, uh, the, the, the river banks and, and stuff as much as they used to for, for water necessities and plumbing now. Uh, but we still hear of a couple fatalities uh, just from tourists. Uh, every year, mm -hmm. uh, and that, that, that's what we hear about, and I'm sure there's, there's natives that uh, get killed quite often as well. So uh, a lot of things what we she's do, doing, okay. what she's doing to the, can she feel that? It, yes, absolutely, yeah, they can feel their, our hands on their skin just like we can. So, um, when I first, 1998, when we, I first walked, uh, started working with the hippos, uh, we did everything but ride a hippo. To be honest with you, we rubbed all over them. Uh, we worked for the smaller ones, the babies we had at the time, we worked right next to them. Um, certain things evolve, and it, 
you thought maybe you know it's not a good idea that we're sticking our hands all over them and in their mouths and stuff like that. So uh, we went oh, almost two decades without touching a hippo. Uh, so in, in the most recent times, we came back to the, the management and said, okay, we can not only touch our hippos safely uh, in a controlled way, but we can also do it because they like it. So uh, one of their favorite things to be scrubbed is their, their muzzle. Uh, there's probably a lot of uh, sensory nerves right there and mm. right where those whiskers are. Makes perfect sense. And they'll rest their head on this bar and we just scratch on them. And they, they do like it. So, uh, we just started doing that over the past oh, gosh, maybe two years. And now we're trying to show that we can touch them on the side in, in a very safe way. So it has to be very controlled uh, because this is a 3,000 pound animal. Yes. Uh, Susie's hand is right there up against a, not only the 3,000 pound animal, but this that is supposed to prevent a 3,000 pound animal from moving. Uh, so we, we have to make sure that she knows that if she moves, we're not going to give her any reward. She's not going to get touched. But if she stays put and puts, keeps her caboose right there, then everything will work and she'll get a nice reward. Is this part of the enrichment? It depends on how you define it. Uh, so uh, enrichment, is, we will do, or we're just going to define for this tourist search sale is something a little different that enhances or, or changes their life, the uh, deviation for the norm. Mm -hmm. so, um, so I wouldn't say it's called enrichment because this is something she's training to do. So I would call it a, a training session itself. Now, uh, if I were to throw, <laughs> I'm just throwing something out there. If I were to throw a, a rabbit in there, that's enriching. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, uh, will she eat it? I don't know. It's Debbie. She's a very special hippo. Uh, but it's something different uh, and something uh, a change to it. So, uh, the enrichment items we use, uh, is not, we don't use them every day. And, and I, I have a, uh, a new child, and I've realized real quick, JJ probably uh, <laughs> agreed to this too. Uh, you buy them a new toy, and you let them have it. Probably the best thing you can do is right when you think they're they're about done with it, take it away. Because they, they, it's it's not interesting anymore. Mm -hmm. So uh, we have, the, the fun thing with the enrichment for the hippo is uh, we don't have to keep it enriching the toy because they usually destroy it before <laughs> it's, uh, 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 it's gone old news, so to speak. So if you look over back here, uh, you'll see a bunch of uh, plastic, hard plastic squares, cylinders, uh -huh. uh, even a keg. <laughs> that is the, the hippo toy graveyard. <laughs> for a lack, of a, lack of a better term. <laughs> so usually we get the, the um, they, they are very expensive. So we get the toys that are no longer enriching for the elephants, and they bring them over to the hippos, the hippos destroy them, and then they, we chop them up into smaller pieces, give them to other animals until, you know, it's basically just goes to recycling. Yeah, why not? What's that? Yeah. All right. Let's um, let me find a target pole. Oh, you gotta go high. All right, so you guys want to do some training with the hippos? Sure. Yeah. I mean, usually no one says no, but. Sure. All right, so one of the principles, uh, one of the first things we train almost any animal is what we call target training. And she's a little touch and go on it, but uh, basically this is, I liken this to the, the, the hammer for a carpenter. This is the most basic, the most important tool uh, when it comes to training almost any animal. So uh, for hippos uh, circumstance, uh, the, the, the hippo nose or is learnt, taught to uh, touch their nose and hold it to this buoy uh, for as long as they we ask them to. So they know to terminate the behavior by when we hear a whistle blow or the buoy gets pulled away. So uh, that seems pretty simple. But uh, if you can imagine what you can do to that if an animal learns to touch its nose to the target buoy. Mm -hmm. You can actually have the animal jump out of the water just by touching the buoy. When you see a dolphin do a, a beautiful flip, it's because they learned to touch the buoy Ooh. out of the water and follow it in the air. So mm -hmm. uh, you see these complicated behaviors that start just with an animal touching a nose. So I'm gonna demonstrate what you guys are going to do. Um, so I'm gonna pretend I'm here, but I'll be next to you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you got it today. Sorry, Whoa. Be glad it happened then. Uh, so, uh, let me guess, she sneezed. Susie's going to say that Debbie sneezed? That is target. And when yeah. you hear the term target, you're going to hold this out just like this. A target. And Debbie will hopefully come up. Target. <laughs> Dancer. She's going to touch her nose there. And when you hear the whistle, pull it back, and then I'll give you a nice little treat, and you're going to toss it right in Debbie's face. Oh. Good? Yeah. All right. 
So when you do get closer, we do uh, have our one important rule, and that is not to break the yellow barrier. Everyone got that? Mm -hmm. Especially with Debbie, uh, she can squeeze through pretty far. So, all right, who wants to go first? And if you have phones, sure, um, why not? I'm I work from left to right. <laughs> Hopefully, so. If you have phones, uh, JJ or help. Sheila or Tanya. Or you can take photos amongst yourselves as well. Feel free to work too. You got the GoPro going. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. I guess I could have helped. I just didn't want to start doing his work. You might be ready for it. <laughs> I'm, I'm so not used to being this end. I'm always over there. Oh. All right, come on down. Do you want to switch? Hi, no, Debbie. No, no, perfectly fine. All right, scoot over. Come over this way. Just a little bit. Okay. All right, you're going to hold this. All right. When I say present the target, or when she says target, you're going to stick it in here right in here. Pretty okay. Debbie. Target. Good girl. Good job. Let me have the target. I'll give you the treat. Take one or two of those and throw it in there. Oh, thanks you got. Good job. No, I think we're good. <laughs> Did you get a picture, dear? I got it right in there, too. Because I've seen them, I've seen them fall asleep halfway through going towards the Oh! Yeah. I thought it was a little bit more than a mic. Okay. <laughs> She's so cute. I'm going to stand right here, sorry, folks. That's okay. We'll move right here. <laughs> How can you tell the difference between the three of them? They all look different. Um, you guys will see Moyo in a few minutes. But um, just like you work with them so much, you can tell the difference. Just like it's, it's their behaviors. Behaviors or personality. Yeah. Um, so right now she's the smallest. So she's kind of shorter. She has a lot more bumps, like on the top of her head. Okay. Compared to some of the other ones. So, yeah, you pick up little things. Like our lions, Iris and Rose, they're sisters. They're, mm -hmm. they're born the same day. So for them, it's the easiest way is the hair on their tail. Ah. It's the easiest. Like one has kind of like long hair, one kind of has short hair. Mm. So you kind of pick up on little things. That uh, is uh, Debbie, Moya. Moya, Mo and then Kita. Kita. Kita, is, Kita is in the habitat? Yes. And then Moyo is her dad. So we can't have those two together at any time because there's no... They'll fight? Birth, well, there's no known uh, birth control that works. <laughs> oh, <okay>. Yeah. <laughs> Just like so, our birds. Yeah, there's no birth control on birds. <laughs> yeah, we should know. <laughs> yeah. So, but yeah, the birds are the same way. You, you can tell each one by their behaviors and their yeah. personality. Uh, I was just wondering because we come here almost every week. Oh, okay. And we see them, one of them swimming around in there. Yeah. It's, it's like, how can you tell which one's which? <laughs> yes. And then, yeah, and her tail. Uh, Debbie? Yeah, Debbie does. Debbie's tail. Yeah, it's like crooked looking. It's very strange. And so it's like who's a genetic the one thing. that's in the water now? That's Kita. Kita. Okay. She was the one that was born here. Oh. <laughs> and then these, this one and the other one was what? From Moya. another zoo or something? Yeah. So Debbie came to us from San Diego, and then oh. Moyo did come to us um, from Denver. Ooh. Okay. And he was like six months old or nine months old or something like that. Um, so he's been here most of his life. Oh. <laughs> And I'm going to be the hippo place marker. So you're going to line up on either side of me. you got two groups of two, so I'm going to be on each side of me. After you're situated, I'm going to leave. Okay. And then JJ's going to take a photo. Alright, sounds good. Alright, um, who went first last time? They went first. They can go again first, that's fine. Yep. Right, let's do it. Okay. okay. And if you want, like, I'll take the photo for you if you want to hand me your key. Is there a password on your phone? Yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> you gotta unlock it for her. Alright, that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Aww. Oh. You, you got two more hairs in there, medium. Gotcha. Thank you very much. This way, yeah, this will block the, the camera. Hole. Yeah. Yeah. All right. yeah. Where are we? Right here? It's right next to me, yeah. Huh? And go a little bit. Puffs up forward. There you go. Good. Okay. All right, I'm going to step out, and Mike's going to bring the hippo behind you. All we need now is the hippo. There we go. 
Hold on. We are inside. She's just lining up the sideways. All you can see is her head. <laughs> Give us a second. We're gonna. You gotta parallel park the hippo. Yeah. Parallel oh park God, the hippo. It does take a little bit of zooming. Oh, right there. Let's turn around. There you go. There's it's the, the best. The best the tail end. Right oh, oh, I yeah. see. Her tail yep. looks weird. I would say knot. I don't know what that is. Yeah, it looks like a knot. Oh. <laughs> he, he's like, uh, I want her. <laughs> That's what that sounded like. Right here is good. All right, pretend I'm Susie. Okay. I know. I'm gonna move down with the car, ladies. I'm gonna be Okay, so get ready. <laughs> there we go. Wow, I don't know. I got a good shot. <laughs> so did the hamster die today? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Can we try one more time? Yes. <laughs> All right, give me a sec. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Mike. <laughs> <laughs> it was fun. <laughs> We've done this before, believe it or not. Yeah. <laughs> Why we don't use her very often, though. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. All right, what? look at the camera, guys. Come on, take the picture. There we go. Let me double check. Let me double check real quick. Yeah. I have one of the banana falling into her, her mouth. Ouch. So I think that was a good one. Yeah. Double check the pictures yourselves. It's, it's your camera. I go ahead. Double check. But that was... Uh, I uh, so usually try to take both of my graphic card photos. I think I've only got one every second yeah. or so. Yeah. So um, I'm not sure what the what the best angle was. That was a pretty good one. So that one. Oh, that's good. a good one. That was the first. Yeah, that's good. I got some good ones in there. Right. Yeah. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Yeah, that's a good one. I like that one. I'm gonna put them on top of the haven behind you. Oh, okay. Oh yeah. And there's another good one. Yeah, we got a few of them. Yeah. Yeah, I got a few good ones. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Perfect. Keep them in the camera, folks. There we go. It actually worked. That's good. All right. Double check those photos again. Just to make sure. I think that was actually the first time I saw that one. Did you see those baby ones yet? No. Well, we can check those later. Uh, articles here, feel free. No, that's gonna be bad for all the trees. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. so we don't have to worry about taking them for you back then. Oh, okay, beautiful. Thank you. Yay! Thank you, Susie. Of course. <laughs> that was fun. Yeah. yeah. So, Debbie, if we see her swimming, she's got the tail. She's got the weird tail. Yeah. She's all right, gonna... so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna bring you next door to me the biggest hippo. Oh, dear. So, what we're gonna do, you're gonna take these two shields. Okay. 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 Only a few, a couple hundred pounds heavier. Oh, wow. So. And if you notice his tail, it's all straight. No knot. Yeah. <laughs> and he has a small booty. Compared to <laughs> booty. Okay, and he's backing up his booty. <laughs> I don't need to take a picture oh, yeah. of his dirty butt. <laughs> So we think that they're probably at the beginning of uh, cycling. So Moyo, the female. So obviously he has his mind on other things. Um, so you know, when it's that time, he doesn't really care about food. Right. Yeah. He just tries to find a way to get to the female. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it was a little, we saw a little bit this morning, so I think it's starting to, it's almost that time of the month. <laughs> hey, he jumped in the water, it looks like. Uh, yeah. 
back. So they always have access to, to water. So there's water here. Obviously, that's the big, big water. Right. Um, so we'll rotate them. We usually um, have two, two out throughout the day. So Kita will come in tonight, and I can't remember who's going out. Debbie might be going out. I don't know. But anyways, another hippo will be out later tonight, and then tomorrow we'll switch, and then the people who didn't go out will go out tomorrow. And does the sure bull ever go out there? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah they does? each get time out, so we have it written down, like, okay, you got, like, half a day, or you got an overnight, which is, like, a long time. So we rotate it just to make sure that all get equal time. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. But then sometimes if, like, this is happening, we have no control. We'll, like, ask him to go to have, but if he doesn't want to... Obviously, we can't force him to. Right. No. Right. So, like, okay, we'll just swap the girls then. Right. So. Yeah. Not not good to force anybody, any yeah. of the animals to do oh, anything yeah. they don't want yeah. to do. I don't know how. Not yet. I don't know how. Oh, you just boy. See how, how, how it's just coming out of the wow. water. It's like, ooh. Yeah. <laughs> and he's actually small for a male. Males he are is? typically, yeah. Males are typically like five to 6,000. And he's like Okay. <laughs> Other things on his mouth. <laughs> it's on the GoPro. Yeah, I know. Okay. No yeah. nerve endings. Wow. There you go. Him. Yeah. <laughs> oh, were you finished with that? Yeah. I'm staying over here. You stay over there. <laughs> Stinks. <laughs> They're animals. They all have a certain smell. Now, which one likes to play with the sticks? The well, the big stick. Debbie. Maybe. Debbie. Yeah, she's our. We call her uh, Demolition Debbie because she has taken those logs and sticks and has smashed holes in the pool oh oh really yes so we don't have as many in there as we used to <laughs> and she's like jammed one way up here so we do dive in the hippo and we're like it's gonna take like at least four of us to try to like wedge this wow log out of out of there, so. 
And he's You're making... recording all of this, right? <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, it's still recording. <laughs> yes, that's his his call. Yep. I'm sure that that a call like that you can't mistake. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we try to get the vocalization on a cue, and Kita, who's out there, we're able to get her to do a little bit of a vocalization. So we're working on it. She's hard. <laughs> yeah. So you, when you take them out to the habitat, you walk them through here? Yep, so they go over their scale right here, ah. over the scale, and then out here to the habitat. Yep. Ah. We have to keep it closed because we have lemurs out there. Right. So we have to have a soft door, otherwise the lemurs could come and go. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah, you didn't know, yeah, the lemurs are yeah, all the way on the far yeah, side. Yeah. But. So yeah, the lemurs can come and go wherever they want to on, they can go on the hippo hab. Mm -hmm. So they like it when we go out there. They're always around us. Like, Ooh, can we steal it? Steal a snack? <laughs> can we take one from the hippo? Like, if a hippo drops it on the ground, they might like snatch it up real quick. Uh -huh. So we're not going in there, are we? No. Uh -huh. No, we can't go in there. Okay, I'm just um, asking. <laughs> no, they need to keep us safe behind these big, huge yeah. <laughs> barricade. <laughs> yeah, but I was there's just... no barricade over there. Yeah. <laughs> No. Wouldn't mind doing that, but <laughs> not necessarily with the big hippos. Yeah. Maybe Has, over in Animal Connections. Yeah. Has any of them stepped on your feet before yet? No, because I'm not with them in the same area. So. But I mean, when, they, when you take them from here to there. Well, we don't walk with them. We're still behind. Oh, okay. We'll send them from here and someone's out there receiving them. Oh. So we'll tell them to go and then they'll go out to the habitat. Now, I have been pooped on before by this one. <laughs> um, yeah, so I was working a session and he was kind of blowing me off. And so he's like, I'm gonna turn around and poop on you to like try to either to get me to stop or to be like, I don't like this. <laughs> right. And it's like, I didn't need, I couldn't re like if I reacted, that'll just make him be like, ooh, if I turn around and poop, I'll get her to stop doing it. I can get a reaction. Yeah. So I had to be calm and I was just like, okay, it's coming. So it wasn't a lot, but we've all been to them. <laughs> we have too, but so. by our birds. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of, we got to go see our lorikeets today. Oh. That's back the other way. <laughs> other side of the park. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's coming out. Take a nap now. Yeah, he's oh, fine. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bye, Debbie. Check out Kita on the habitat. Um, again, we don't know how she's resting or what she's up to, but uh, going up the skate here, just fall to the right and go right in front of the habitat. Good way to see him. But otherwise, uh, thank you very much, guys. Thanks for uh, hanging yeah, out thank with you us. Guys. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you all. You're welcome. You too. Enjoy the nice weather. Oh, yeah. If you want some more hand sanitizer again, because you were touching some food, feel free to grab some. Okay. That was cool. That was. Hey, and some hay. That's hay. That's There's a lot of hay, yeah. Crap. So there's different types of hay. Typically, they, I think you get a lot of... Uh, the, this stuff is 
Yes. Of the hay, but she gets a lot of things. Coastal is what she eats a lot too. Mike, is it coastal hay she eats a lot of? Or Timothy? Yeah. Coastal, all right. Coastal? Yeah. So it depends on the animal, it depends on their diet, but we'll, we can vary what kind of hay they get because it's going to have different nutritional content as well. So again, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Thank you very much for hanging out. I know Mona oh. was kind of in a funky mood, but I hope you guys enjoyed hanging out with Debbie. <laughs> Debbie was a riot today, let me tell you. She's usually <laughs> not as entertaining, I guess you could say. But she was a very funky. Wow. Well, you well, have to, you have to forgive Moyo. Yeah, but I think you guys all enjoyed yourselves. Oh, again, all the interaction part, you guys got to do with Debbie. So yes. the only thing else you missed was watching a tooth trim. But again, enjoy the rest of your day, folks. Thank you. Will do. If you have any questions, please. Thank you. Well, folks, that was a hippo insider tour. And that was Cheetah Hunt that just went behind me. And uh, yeah, we got to see Debbie. Uh, Moyo, well, we didn't get to see too much of Moyo because, well, Moyo's in the mood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. just like any other male, right? <laughs> just a typical male. All he thinks about is, anyway. <laughs> um, we're gonna cut this right now. And. We're going to go have some more fun. Maybe pick out some more rides. Who knows? We'll see you later.